So you're a ham radio operator and you'd like to know where around the world your signal is being heard. The reverse beacon network might be just what you're looking for. That's what we'll be exploring today. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and welcome to Ask Dave episode 32. The last Ask Dave video discussed the International Beacon Project. Those beacons are spread across the world, and you listen to them to see which you can hear. But several viewers have asked about something called the Reverse Beacon Network. In this case, you transmit, and there are volunteer Reverse Beacon stations around the world that are always listening. If they hear your station called CQ in Morse code, on radio teletype, or PSK31, they send that information to a central server and you can see who hears you. Let's see how this works. Here's a photo I took some years ago of the Yakina Point Lighthouse in Newport, Oregon. A lighthouse fits the definition of a beacon, a signal from a fixed point that can be used for navigation. So here are the two parties involved. The lighthouse sits at a known position ashore. A ship is at sea. In the standard beacon mode with which we're familiar, the lighthouse turns its light on and off at regular intervals to identify which lighthouse it is. A ship at sea can identify this as the Yakina Point Lighthouse and can determine the way to the harbor. So the transmission takes place from the beacon to the user. Now, let's reverse this. Suppose there's no light at the lighthouse. I'll call it a dark house. Instead, the ship at sea carries a light aimed at the dark house. In the dark house is someone with binoculars who determines what direction the ship's light is coming from. Through a feedback loop over radio or satellite, this information is passed to the ship. The ship knows it has been seen and gets feedback about its position and the strength of its light. The dark house might see light from several ships at sea at the same time. In the last Ask Day video, I discussed the International Beacon Project. Each beacon is like a radio lighthouse. Let's put you in Central Africa for the purpose of this chart. You hear some of the beacons, but not others. Let's reverse this. Now, suppose, for the sake of argument, that it's your station in Central Africa that's transmitting. Some of the reverse beacon stations will hear you. This information is fed back to you over the Internet. In this case, the information from the reverse beacon stations, which listen instead of transmit, ends up at reversebeacon.net. You can look there to see who hears you. Reverse beacon stations are run by volunteers. They each have a wideband receiver, such as a software-defined radio. These radios can often hear the entire CW band all at once, up to 91 kilohertz from the bottom of the band. The output of these receivers is fed into special software called CW Skimmer. This amazing piece of software listens for CQs, or the word test, and then the call sign that follows. So if I were to call CQ, 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 followed by my call sign a couple times, the skimmer software at one or more reverse beacon sites might pick this up. This information is then transmitted over the internet to end up at reversebeacon.net. There are several ways you can get this reverse beacon information, but we'll use reversebeacon.net because it's easy. Let's look at the Reverse Beacon Network webpage at reversebeacon.net. Navigate to the main page from the menu. This is what you see. The map shows the links between the transmitting stations and the listening reverse beacon stations. The links are in real time and are updated every 20 seconds or so. Note the color coding. The orange lines are 40 meters, 
Red is for 30 meters and purple is for 20 meters. Other bands will show up too as shown in the color code. Underneath you'll see the list of most recently heard stations. The first column is the call sign of the Reverse Beacon Network station. Sometimes you'll see this repeated because that station is reporting several different signals. The next column contains the list of stations heard. A small icon indicates the flag of the sending station's country. These are the stations that transmitted a CQ or test on CW, RIDI, or PSK31. The system was originally honed for CW, and the software for listening to RIDI and PSK31 is getting better with time. Next comes the frequency, and you'll note that if multiple listening stations hear the same transmitting station, they could indicate slightly different frequencies due to differences in calibration of the receivers. The next column indicates the mode that was used, usually CW, but sometimes RIDI and PSK31. It also notes if the station was calling CQ or if the station was calling CQDX. It also has an indicator if the station being heard uses Logbook of the World. This is useful if you need confirmation for an award. The Signal to Noise Ratio column gives you an indication of signal strength at the receiving station. The next column gives the speed of the mode you're using. Finally, we have the time and date. Now, let's look more closely at the map. You can see who is hearing whom. You can look at this map and see which bands are open to where. In this case, many of the transatlantic connections are via 40 meters. So, if you're looking for transatlantic DX, use 40 meters. I do caution that the straight lines are not the actual signal path because this is a flat map projection. Let's see if the system will pick me up. Here I will call CQ using my Yaesu FTDX3000 hooked to a vertical antenna. I'm running about 100 watts, which is actually a lot on CW. The reverse beacon stations use automated CW decoding, and the software decodes best if very clean code is sent. So, I will use my paddles to send CW as cleanly as I can. Here goes. I did this on both 40 and 20, and then switched to Ham Radio Deluxe to call CQ on RIDI and PSK31. The Reverse Beacon website allows you to search for your own call. Note that because the network heard you, you're considered the DX. In the left-hand column are the stations that heard me. The frequency column shows that I called on both 40 meters and on 20. I used CW, RIDI, and PSK31. The signal to noise ratio column showed that my signal strength varied widely from one listening station to another. The speed column shows my CW speed accurately, the RIDI baud rate, and the bandwidth of the PSK31 signal. So that's how the reverse beacon system works. You transmit and various reverse beacon stations can hear you and put reports on the reversebeacon.net website. Also, the website provides an excellent map showing real-time contacts. One disadvantage of the Reverse Beacon Network is that the listening stations are not spread uniformly around the Earth. So, just because no hops are shown doesn't mean the band is closed. But still, it's a useful system, and I encourage you to give it a try. Because I began with a photo of the Yakina Point Lighthouse, I thought you might like to see what's inside of it. Some years ago, I climbed the stairs myself. The light itself is surprisingly small, a 1000 watt incandescent bulb. That's the equivalent of just 10 normal household 100 watt bulbs. 
All the glass you see behind the bulb is a giant Fresnel lens that focuses light onto the horizon, which makes it seem much brighter to ships out at sea. There's a spare bulb along with a mechanism to rotate the spare bulb into exactly the right position should the first one fail. Just like with ham radio, it's amazing what simple equipment can do. If you liked this video, please share it with your friends. I urge you to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos. I have a tip jar on my YouTube channel page and also on my website at ke0og.net, and I gratefully acknowledge those who have supported my channel. The whole purpose of this series is to answer your questions about ham radio, especially those of interest to those new to the hobby. You can ask questions by commenting on any of my videos on YouTube, preferably on the one most directly related to your question, or you can pose a question directly at www.ke0og.net slash ask-dave. Until we next meet, 73.